Absolutely. And he shared his opinion with me a lot and he shared it with the chancellor. So in discussing, you know, his future in not coaching, we said, well, okay, well, what's next? Obviously you've all the things that you said, I mean, he's got enormous um, experience. He uh, knows everybody in the profession. And so he gave us his thoughts. We continue to have an exchange and I'll continue to, to ask for his help along the way. He's uh, one of the many Carolina alums that is in the business and understands the importance of this job. So certainly we'll use him. Thank you. CL, then Andrew Jones. Bubba, uh, how important do you feel uh, head coaching, prior head coaching experience will be in this decision? Is this thing where uh, that is a requirement, a prerequisite for it, or is there some leeway to, uh, to maybe take a chance or think outside the box? Um, it is important. Um, I've always said that my preference is uh, I'd, I'd like to hire people that have done it before, head coaches, but it, it's not a requirement. Um, there's a lot of different attributes that uh, people bring to the table that need to be considered for it. And, you know, if there's a perfect person out there, you know, I'd like to find them. But there's going to be pros and cons of every every person out there, whether they have a Carolina connection or not, have been a head coach or not. Um, whether they played in the NBA or not, whether they've coached in the NBA or not, there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of different qualifications for a job. And as I mentioned, you know, it's the time, it's the circumstance, it's the right person at the right time. Right, right, Roy talked about being the right man for the job. And uh, I do think there are periods of time where certain attributes are going to outweigh another, but we'll consider all of them. Andrew Johns and Brendan. Hey, Bubba, Roy mentioned today that on Sunday you tried talking him out of it. So you've known about this for several days. Have you already begun the process of reaching out to some people uh, or were you waiting until after the announcement became public? And if so, how many people have you contacted? Great question. Um, no, and I, you know, typically I would like to reach out, okay. reach people. But, you know, I, Roy wanted to um, wait and tell the team first, tell his staff and hold the press conference. So I didn't think it was appropriate to tell anybody. I, mean, I didn't tell my wife until yesterday. And I, you know, she's not home, but I flew home from Indianapolis yesterday. In fact, I called my assistant and said, uh, I need a flight home on Wednesday, but I can't tell you why. And, um, and so, no, I kept it in strict confidence. And I started getting, receiving phone calls and making phone calls today. Brandon and Taylor. Hey, Bubba, thanks for taking the time to do this. Uh, sort of a, an additional link onto that last question, but coaches and, and sometimes athletic directors talk about having a so-on-so list of potential names, you know, just in case something ever happened with somebody. Just wondering, um, did you have that list? Is that something that you and Coach Williams, before he expressed his recommendation, is that something that you had um, previously thought about or had started working on at any point? You know, I, I'm not one that keeps a written list but I'm a, I'm a, it's like you guys. I mean, you know, it, it's a very public business. We all know who the best coaches are in college basketball. We know the best coaches in the NBA. I mean, it, it, you know, if I could pull Jeannie out of a bottle and say, hey, look at this, you know, John Wooden's come back to life and he's going to be our head coach. I mean, it, it's a pretty, pretty narrow set of people when you say you've got the, the you know, the best job in college sports. You know, you guys, you, you know who everyone would have in mind. I'm not going to try to trick anybody and say there's this sleeper out there. I mean, that, that's the reality of, of the business that we're in. Um, and, and so, of, of course, I paid attention. You know, I actually paid attention a lot more probably when I was at Tulsa and Ball State because we turned over coaches all the time. Coaches don't turn over at Carolina. So you get plenty of time to think about it. You got a lot of time to think and less time to act. So I better start acting pretty quickly here. Taylor, then Greg Barnes. Hey, Bubba. With how important the Carolina basketball family is to the program, how is this coaching staff, I mean, how is this coaching search going to be different than potentially anything you've ever been a part of? Well, as I said, I mean, this is the most iconic basketball program in the country. And I'm involved in making the decision on who's going to be the next head coach and the history and tradition and legacy. Uh, is really important. Winning is important. And we're facing a different environment moving forward between some of the things that were mentioned today with uh, the transfer portal uh, being wide open, over 1,200 people in it right now, name, image, and likeness coming down the path. Um, it's going to be a very different environment. 
in coaching, recruiting, and retaining students to play on the team. And we're committed to being good. And uh, we have to find the right leader that... Uh, Goodman. Hey, Bubba, along those lines, uh, you've got a lot of fans who want somebody strictly from the Carolina family. And I know there's also the, uh, the case to be made for, for people who appreciate the Carolina program and what it stands for without having direct ties. Uh, do you do you have a requirement in terms of what you're looking for with their their knowledge and understanding of, of what Carolina basketball is? No, I don't. Um, you know, it's the same way with head coaching experience. Carol, a pretty rare territory for for an athletic director to do. So honestly, appreciate the candor. Um, as far as the, the the Carolina family, myopic on as I said, the head coaching thing. I don't want to be myopic on the Carolina experience because they both bring great value in different ways. David Teal, then Ross Martin. Bubba Roy mentioned during his. Well, the number one thing for me is integrity. I mean, you know, a lot of different issues and, you know, your, your reputation gets so damaged so quickly and we have to have somebody that has impeccable integrity, somebody that really values the student experience, the educational experience of what we do. We've got great debatational experience. And I, I know that a lot of people laugh at that, but I, I firmly believe in, I firmly believe in the, the broad-based programming. And to me, all of that ties together. And, you know, we started the complete Carolina program. Yeah, we want one and done player to be able to have the one and done guys come back and finish their degrees. And so I, I the standards are going to change. The use of agents are going to change, but we want kids that are going to want. Well, I, I tell you one thing that I, I've, I've learned that um, any good athletic department has great coaches and we, we better get a great coach because this is our premier program. And so it, it, it really is a coach driven program and we have to find the guy that can lead us. And, you know, Mac had a, a relationship with North Carolina. Now think the world of him because he is such a good communicator and he, he provides things that are needed and necessary and they feel good about the effort it takes to be successful because they know that he really cares about them. And same true is true with Roy. There's not a single person for them and for their health, their safety, their well-being. He is totally committed to the person. So that's a, a thing that um, I, I think is the hallmark of our great coaches, whether it's our soccer coaches, lacrosse coaches, they're outstanding individuals that really care about the person. And I think, yeah, again, that's, that's what we're going to try to find. Well, thanks, everybody. We set a record today with about 80 people. That was a single season Zoom mark, and we didn't break the computer. So thank you. And, Bubba, really appreciate your time. Uh, thanks, everybody. Y'all have a good night. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, thanks, thanks Bubba. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Bubba. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.